sending emails to the staff of Bita Yeager, a district court judge, threatening to commit violence upon B.D. Yeager and to publicly provide personally identifiable information about B.D. Yeager via the internet, a practice commonly referred to as doxing. All right, good afternoon. Thank you. Mr. Singer, you want to say your appearance and for your Yes, friend? thank you, Judge Philip Singer for the defense. And is Mr. Dowling present with us in custody? He is present in custody next to me, Judge. All right, thank you. And I have been advised and um, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, stand in for Judge Israel to take a plea on this matter, that a guilty plea agreement is going to be entered by Mr. Dowling. Uh, it looks like we have five counts total. And I'll go ahead and ask you, Mr. Singer, if you can, just if you would like to state the negotiations. And then, Mr. Uh, Dowling, I will have um, some follow-up questions for you, okay? And it's going to be eight counts total, Your Honor. It's going to be the original indictment. Oh, okay. I, I just, when I saw the numbers, but there are multiple counts of, of at least three of the uh, charges, so I do see that. Um, before we get started, can, uh, um, and actually, Mr. Singer, go over, can we have counsel at the bench? Just one second. I just have one quick follow-up question. All right, and so, Mr. Dowling, as I noted, after your counsel does state the negotiations, then I'm going to have some questions for you, okay? Thank you, Judge. With your permission today, my client's going to plead guilty to plead guilty but mentally ill to count one battery on an officer, which is a gross. Counts two and six, extortion, B felony. Count three and seven, stalking with use of internet or electronic communication, C felony. Count four and eight, intimidating public officer. And count five, attempt to intimidate a public officer. Um, and then he is going to. Um, I can run through it. Just for the record, also, he's going to. Um, there's some trailing misdemeanors in Henderson, which counsel has agreed to dismiss. I mean, to uh, give him credit for time served. No, we're going to dismiss it pursuant this. Okay. All right. And I can run through the, the terms, Your Honor, just as to. Counts 1, 4, 5, and 8, uh, we're going to stipulate to a jail sentence, an aggregate jail sentence for all of those that is equal to uh, the time that he's serving between his arrest on June 23, 2023 to the date of rendition of sentence in this case. Okay. As to counts 2, 3, 6, and 7, we're going to stipulate to a sentence of probation to run consecutive to those prior counts I just mentioned, 1, 4, 5, and 8, for the maximum fixed term uh, with conditions of probation to include inpatient mental health treatment and thereafter outpatient treatment and full compliance with medical health, uh, mental health medications and remaining duration for the remaining duration and probation. Further conditions include uh, defendant has to have no contact and stay away from the following people, Barbara Skifalaka, Mark Skifalaka, Peter Yeager, Steve Yeager, Thomas Roberts, Gregory Cap, Jason Lafreniere, and LB, MPD Corrections Officer Jada Ruiz, including all of those persons place of work, residences, and family members. As to the places of work for the, that are LBMPD or courthouse facilities, the defendant can only visit such locations for official business and with prior approval of his probation officer. He also would have intensive supervision at the discretion of the division of parole probation. Further, as to counts 2, 3, 6, and 7, we stipulate to an aggregate uh, suspended sentence of 48 to 120 months in the Nevada Department of Corrections, running consecutive to counts 1, 4, 5, and 8. Uh, we also are agreeing as the state of Nevada to dismiss Henderson Township Justice Court case number 23 CRH 000927. If the defendant successfully completes probation, he may withdraw his felony pleas to counts 2, 3, 6, and 7 and plead guilty but mentally ill to the following amended counts with credit for time served. Count 2, coercion. Count 3, stocking. Count 6, coercion. And count 7, stocking. All misdemeanors. However, he understands that he's not eligible for the reduction of plea if at any time after the entry of plea one or more of the following events occur. He fails to appear at any subsequent hearing in this case. He fails to complete an interview with the Division of Parole Probation within 15 days of the entry of plea and a failure to appear. Pre-sentence investigation report is filed in this case. An independent magistrate by affidavit or declaration review confirms probable cause against him for new criminal charges including reckless driving and DUI but excluding minor traffic violations. The court finds him in violation of probation regardless of whether his branch of probation is revoked. He fails to successfully graduate from any program contemplated by this agreement or any other program ordered by the court, including especially court programs, inpatient treatment and outpatient treatment. He fails to pay the entire amount of restitution before the expiration or termination of the term of probation or he moves for early release from probation. 
He acknowledges that he will be prohibited from only discussing firearms while in conviction and adjudication as mentally ill pursuant to the terms of this agreement. All remaining counts of the criminal complaint which were found over in the district court, uh, which are none, uh, will be dismissed. The only thing that I would want to ask if counsel may want to try to interlineate now is we just got notice this week, and you may or may not be aware, but intensive supervision program is being discontinued as of the end of this month. I think the intensive supervision that's being discontinued, my understanding, is that is through the Justice Court Pretrial Services, and that's a pretrial intensive supervision, not the probation. I, 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 you're correct from what I understand that the one that's being discontinued is the one that Justice Court administers. It just wasn't clear to me if, uh, and I haven't seen reference to this other version through um, uh, probation that, that you should call it something else. So when I saw that, I just wanted to be sure. So Absolutely. with the understanding that that would be a post-conviction condition. Uh, all right, so um, obviously a lot going on here. And Mr. Dowling, I do want to first get a little bit of background information on you, okay? Um, I have Charles Francis Dowling as your full true name, is that correct? Correct. And how old are you, sir? Uh, 21 years old. How far did you go with the schooling that you had? Uh, 14th grade, also known as sophomore year college. I don't know how it's the sophomore year college. Sophomore year college is fine. The reason we ask the question is because there's a guilty plea agreement here indicating, as noted by counsel just a minute ago, that you are going to plead guilty but mentally ill to a number of counts here. And attached to that guilty plea agreement is the amended indictment, which has those counts. And I just want to make sure that before you signed the guilty plea agreement and appeared here today to enter your plea, did you have a chance to go over these documents fully with your attorney? I do, Your Honor. And do you believe through those discussions that you have a complete understanding of each of the charges that you are pleading guilty to? Guilty to? There are multiple counts of some of those charges but that you have a complete understanding of those charges. Any questions you may have had about these charges, the plea process, um, uh, anything at all uh, related to what we're doing here now, did you have all those questions asked and answered to your satisfaction? Um, they're not fully answered yet, but I'm going to be doing probably afterwards if that's possible. Well, it, it, it depends. I, I ask the question sort of generally that way because sometimes that's a catch-all. If the answer to that question had been yes, and you had all your questions asked and answered to your satisfaction, then I wouldn't necessarily need to go into individualized questions. But I'm happy to do that. My, my main point here is, as you know, each of these counts um, have with them different um, category of felony or different type of um, charge. There are the... Um, Count one, battery on officer is a gross misdemeanor. Counts two and six, the extortion counts are category B felonies. Counts three and seven are counts of stalking with use of internet or electronic communication, that's category C felony. Count four and eight is the intimidating public officer um, counts. Um, those are gross misdemeanors. And the uh, count five, the attempt to intimidate a public officer is also gross misdemeanor. So they all carry with them different ranges of sentence. I just want to make sure, do you believe that you understand each of these charges sufficiently to enter a plea today? Oh, I understand those counts, yeah, yeah. Okay, and do you understand uh, the range of sentence that you could face going to sentencing? I All right, and are there any questions that you would like to ask me or even your counsel at this time before we go forward with the process? Um, well, in regards to like smaller details, um, is there a way I can make corrections on some of the smaller details? Before I answer, let me make sure I understand the question with a question back to you. <clears throat> at, a, at the last part of the process today would be for me to summarize, with your permission, the facts that are laid out in the amended uh, indictment, which is the charging document that's attached as Exhibit 1 to your guilty plea agreement. And of course this is the charging document and of course it's not attempting to say all the facts it's attempting to say the necessary facts to support the elements of the charges okay and so it's always understood that there is there are more facts right than what is seen here if what you're asking me is would it be appropriate at some point for you to uh, flesh out these facts in some way 
I would suggest that's more appropriate at the time of sentencing when you make your argument for what the court should do versus something that you would necessarily do by motion. Because at some point here today, I'm going to ask if you can confirm that these are the facts that you are pleading guilty but mentally ill to. And if we do that, you know, and, and you're unable to what we call allocute to those facts, then we really would have the inability to finish your plea canvas today because I have to make certain findings. I have to make findings that you are entering this, these pleas today with knowledge, that you're entering these pleas today um, you know, of, the, of the facts and circumstances, of the consequences, and you're doing so freely and voluntarily. And so if there are um, questions about that, it is far better that we address them now. But if what you're just talking about is sort of wanting to help the judge who sentences you to better understand what occurred, why it occurred, any of those things, that's really sentencing argument. All right, and then I understand the counts themselves, yeah. Okay, and so, but you have a complete understanding of all the counts you believe in order to enter a plea today. Okay, and um, may I just ask, are you on any medication today that you believe would impact your ability to understand these documents or enter your plea? Okay, are you under any medication at all today, period? Uh, not, at all. not at the moment, no, okay. And uh, so before I take your plea on these counts, I do have another uh, aspect to go over with you. And that is that I understand this negotiation was entered into as the result of a settlement conference. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. And did you voluntarily participate in that settlement conference? Yes, I did. Did you sign an acknowledgement prior to voluntarily participating in that settlement conference? All right. All right. And I just want to confirm for the record, have you confirmed for the record, that that settlement conference took place before a different judge other than myself and a different judge other than Judge Israel, who is your assigned judge to this case, that it was some other judge who did the settlement conference, correct? Yes. All right. Did anyone, including the settlement judge, in any way force or coerce you to accept these negotiations? All right. And I also want to make sure you understand, because this um, negotiation was arrived at a settlement conference, that if the trial judge, Judge Israel, or anyone who may be standing in for him that day, if he is unwilling to follow the negotiations, I'm not saying that he would be, but if he is, that you would understand that you and or the state would have the right to withdraw from the negotiations uh, if that occurs. Do you understand that? I understand. All right. And um, so if you are ready to go forward, what I would like to do is I would like to take your plea as to each of the counts and charges, and then I would have a few follow-up questions for you to make sure that you understand the rights that are impacted by entering such a plea, okay? Are you ready for me to do that? Yes, sir. All right. Um, and normally I say uh, what, what the answer to the plea would be, but I think with your counsel's discussion, you, you know what you want to respond, so I'm not gonna supply the options, I'll just let you respond. But as to starting with, Count one, battery on an officer, gross misdemeanor. How do you plead? Uh, guilty, but mentally. Thank you. As to counts two and six, counts of extortion, category B felony, how do you plead? Guilty, but mentally. As to counts three and seven, counts of stalking with use of internet or electronic communications, category C felony, how do you plead? Guilty, but mentally. As to counts four and eight, counts of intimidating public officer, gross misdemeanor, how do you plead? And finally, as to count five, attempt to intimidate a public officer, also a gross misdemeanor, how do you plead? Guilty but mentally. You've now entered guilty pleas, but men, guilty, guilty but mental Ill, Ill pleas to each of the charges that are noted in your guilty plea agreement. And I, again, just want to follow up and make sure, um, are you, again, entering these pleas today because it is your choice to do so for whatever reason you are making that choice? Yes, sir. And we've already indicated no one forced you or coerced you, correct? All right. And I think we've also indicated that you understand that it still is up to the judge to make the final decision on what your sentencing will be. Is that clear? Uh, yes. Obviously, if, if the judge doesn't follow the negotiations, then you could withdraw or the state could withdraw from the proceedings. But it's still up to the judge to make the final decision. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Has anybody promised or guaranteed you that you would get any particular outcome at the time of sentencing? You understand there's recommendations that are going to be made, there's stipulations for the judge to consider, 
but no one said to you with certainty, this is what will happen at sentencing. Is that correct, or is there some different no, understanding? That's correct, yeah. Okay. And with those understandings, would you still like to continue with your plea? Uh, yes. All right. I do want to make sure that you understand the rights that you have. And uh, But before I go over that, I do want to just take a moment. In the guilty plea agreement, as to page four, consequences of the plea, I'm just going to remind you that these items are here. It does indicate here that you understand that by pleading guilty but mentally ill, that you are admitting the facts which support all the elements of the offense. We talked about that before, about that's what's in the charging document, is the facts that would support the elements of the offense, and that you are pleading to those as set forth in the Exhibit 1, which is the amended indictment. Do you understand that? I understand. I also want to note that it indicates that you understand that as a defendant who has entered a plea of guilty but mentally ill, you have the burden of establishing your mental illness by a preponderance of the evidence. Do you understand that? I understand. And uh, also have here that um, you understand that except as otherwise provided by any specific statute that you as a defendant who has entered a plea of guilty but mentally ill, you are subject to the same criminal, civil, and administrative penalties and procedures as a defendant who pleads guilty. Do you understand that? I understand. All right. Um, do we need to go over anything further in that section, uh, Mr. Dickerson, do you believe? No, I don't believe so, Your Honor. I think those are the main ones. The, the rest of it talks about if the court finds other things or, or has different outcomes, but, but I don't know that that is anticipated. Uh, it talks about also... Um, and it's kind of more detailed, but I might go over this one, that it, if you are found to be mentally ill at the time of sentencing, the court would shall, it says, impose any sentence that the court is authorized to impose upon a defendant who pleads guilty or is found guilty of the same offense and include in that sentence or order that you, during the period of any confinement or probation, be given or obtain such treatment as is medically indicated for your mental illness. And, and I think there was some discussion about that already, but are you aware of those um, we'll call them again consequences of the plea. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, I think there's one more that I do think is important to go over. Um, and it indicates here that if your sentencing would include a period of confinement at any state correctional facility, the Department of Corrections would separate you from the general population of the prison and not return you to that population until a licensed psychiatrist or psychologist employed by the department finds that you no longer require acute mental health care um, and that if you are placed or returned into the gen general population, you must continue to be given or obtain such treatment as is med medically indicated for your mental illness. So that covers that. Should there be incarceration again, it's all ultimately going to outcome at the sentencing. But do you understand those circumstances? I understand. All right. And with all of that, um, uh, I'm going to want to go over now the rights that you have that are affected by your plea entry today to make sure that you understand those and still wish to proceed. It has it in the guilty plea agreement, but you, of course, as a person accused of crime in the state of Nevada, under the Nevada and the United States constitutions, could um, go to trial, make the state have to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You would have no obligation or burden at the time of trial. But, of course, in most cases, a defense counsel would put on some defense, examine witnesses that you would put forward, cross-examine witnesses the state would put forward. You could even testify on your own behalf, but you could never be forced or compelled to do so. And if you chose not to testify, of course the court would instruct the jurors to disregard that fact, not use it against you in any way. And if there were guilty verdicts on any one or more, charge, one or more charges, you could appeal that to the higher courts. But you're giving up those rights by entering a plea today. Do you understand that? I understand. And you still wish to go forward with your plea? also want to make sure you understood that if after today you wanted to withdraw the plea. I'm not saying that you would, but if you did, the only way you could do that, separate and apart from what we've discussed, if the court did not follow the negotiations specifically, but if for other reasons you thought you wanted to withdraw your plea, it's important, I think, to make the record that you understand that you cannot just do that on your own by taking back the plea. The only way you could actually have the court withdraw your plea, other than, again, the circumstances of the court not following negotiations, would be for you to prove that there was a legal basis, that you could meet the legal standard. What that is, to me, is not as important as just you confirming your understanding that you cannot just on your own change your mind and take it back. Do you understand that? I understand. And you still wish to go forward with your plea? I still wish to go forward. All right. Do you have any questions for Mr. Singer or me at this point before we do the last step, which is to go over the factual basis for the plea? I do not know. All right. Um, the admitted indictment is quite lengthy, and um, I don't know if there's any 
uh, best way to go over this other than to just maybe go count by count and ask if he confirms those facts? Is that Probably council's intention? Okay. So, and again, to remember, uh, Mr. Dowling, that these are the facts as laid out by the state to meet the elements of the charges. We understand that there is, for lack of a better way to put it, more to the story, but it would be required if you are so willing to do so, to allocute or meaning agree to these facts as stated if we're gonna proceed with your plea, okay? But whether you do or do not is still entirely up to you, all right? So what I have here is that, um, on or between May 27, 2023 and June 18, 2023, in Clark County, State of Nevada, contrary to the laws of State of Nevada, that you did, as to count one, battery on an officer, on or about the 29th day of May, 2023, willfully, unlawfully, and knowingly use force or violence upon the person of another identified as Jay Ruiz, performing duties of a peace officer employed with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, and that you knew or should have known that Jay Ruiz was an officer and that the um, battery was by elbowing the officer in the chest and or kicking him on the legs. Um, as to the count one, are these the facts that you are pleading guilty to today? Pleading guilty but mentally ill to today. Yeah. All right. The next um, plea uh, that you entered were to the counts two and six. These are extortion counts. As to count two, it indicates that you did honor between May 27, 2023 and June 17, 2023, willfully, unlawfully, and feloniously, sorry, willfully, unlawfully, feloniously, and knowingly, with the intent to extort, to influence the action of any public officer, and or to do or abet or procure any illegal or wrongful act, whether or not the purpose is accomplished, threaten directly or indirectly to injure a person or property, to accuse any person of a crime, to expose or impute to any person any disgrace, and or to publish or connive at publishing any libel to it, and then it indicates that you posted on social media the home address of District Court Hearing Master Barbara Skifalakwa, along with disparaging remarks about her and threat, and thereafter going to her home and leaving cracked raw eggs, spices, vegetables, and other items on her front porch, along with a letter condemning District Court Hearing Master Skifalakwa for her rulings on a recent temporary protective order TPO case, wherein you were the uh, applicant and thereby seeking to unduly pressure District Court Hearing Master Skifalakwa to modify her previous court order and or issue an order of contempt against the adverse party and or intimating harm will occur if certain laws are not passed. That's count two. Count six extortion indicates that you did honor between June 14, 2023 and June 18, 2023, willfully and lawfully, feloniously and knowingly, with the intent, again, to extort, to influence the action of any public officer and or to do or abet or procure any illegal or wrongful act, whether or not the purpose is accomplished, threaten directly or indirectly to injure a person or property, to accuse any person of a crime, to expose or impute to any person any disgrace, and or to publish or connive at publishing any libel to it, in this case, sending emails to the staff of Beta Yeager, a district court judge, threatening to commit violence upon B.D. Yeager and to publicly provide personally identifiable information about B.D. Yeager via the internet, a practice commonly referred to as doxing, along with disparaging remarks about her, defendant, again, targeting district court judge B.D. Yeager due to her decisions and her presiding over a specific case and or the case of the state of Nevada versus Darian Gonzalez, identified as case number C369962-1, Thereafter, you posting on social media the home address of District Court Judge B.D. Yeager and also going to B.D. Yeager's home and leaving a knife, cracked raw eggs, spices, vegetables, and other items on her front porch and or yard and sending a direct message via social media to her husband, thereby seeking to unduly pressure her to modify her previous court orders, rulings, and her future handling of a specific case and or the case, again, of St. Nevada versus Darian Gonzalez, case number C369962-1 and or intimating harm will occur if certain laws are not passed. Uh, these are counts two and six extortion category B felonies. Are these the facts that you are pleading guilty but mentally ill to today? Yes, All right. The next set of, uh, or the next one I should say, uh, was the count of, counts three and seven. These are counts of stalking with use of internet or electronic communication. These are category C felonies. As to count three, 
the charging document indicates that on or between May 27, 2023 and June 17, 2023, you did willfully, unlawfully, feloniously, maliciously engage in a course of conduct with use of an internet or network site, electronic mail, text messaging, or any other similar means of communication to publish, display, or distribute information in a manner that substantially increased the risk of harm to or violence to District Court Hearing Master Barbara Skifalakwa, and that course of conduct would cause a reasonable person to feel terrorized, frightened, intimidated, harassed, and or fearful <coughs> for her immediate safety or the immediate safety of a family or household member. And that course of conduct did in fact cause uh, District Court Hearing Master Skifalakwa to feel terrorized, frightened, intimidated, <coughs> harassed, or fearful for her immediate safety or the immediate safety of a family or household member. Mm -hmm. And that this was by you posting on social media the home address of District Court Hearing Master Skifalakwa, <coughs> along with disparaging remarks about her, thereafter going to her home and leaving the cracked raw eggs, spices, and cut up vegetables uh, on her front porch, along with a letter condemning her uh, for the rulings in the recent TPO to Temporary Protective Order case where the defendant was the applicant, where you were in fact the applicant. And then as to uh, excuse me, count seven, stalking with use of internet or electronic communication, again, did honor between June 14th and June 18, willfully, unlawfully, feloniously, maliciously engage in a course of conduct with use of internet or network site, electronic mail, text messaging, or any other similar means of communicating to publish, display, or distribute information in a manner that substantially increased the risk of harm or violence to B.D. Yeager, a district court judge, and then that course of conduct would cause a reasonable person to feel terrorized, frightened, intimidated, harassed, and or fearful for her immediate safety or the immediate safety of a family or household member. And that course of conduct did in fact cause District Judge B.D. Eager to feel terrorized, frightened, intimidated, harassed, or fearful for her immediate safety or the immediate safety of a family or household member. And that this was by sending emails to her staff uh, threatening to commit violence upon her and to publicly provide personally identifiable information about her via the internet a practice commonly referred to as doxing, thank you, <laughs> along with disparaging remarks about her and that you did target her, uh, D District Judge B. D. Yeager, due to her decisions and or presiding over a specific case and or the case of State Nevada versus Darian Gonzalez, case number C369962-1, uh, and thereafter you posting on social media the home address of uh, District Judge Yeager, going to her home, leaving the knife, cracked raw eggs, spices, vegetables, and other items on her French point porch and her yard and sending a direct message via social media to her husband. Uh, those are the counts again, three and seven, stalking with use of internet or electronic communications, category C felony. Are these the facts that you are pleading guilty but mentally ill to today? Yes, sir. All right, we just have a few more. We have counts four and eight. These are gross misdemeanor counts of intimidating public officer. As to count four, the count of intimidating public officer does indicate that honor between May 27, 2023 and June 17, 2023, you did willfully, unlawfully, directly or indirectly address any threat or intimidation to a public officer identified as Barbara Skifalakwa, District Court Hearing Master with the 8th Judicial District Court with intent to induce her, contrary to her duty to do so, make, omit, or delay any act, decision, or determination uh, by posting on Facebook the home, her home address along with disparaging remarks about her and or by going to her home and leaving cracked raw eggs, spices, vegetables, and other items on her front porch, along with a letter condemning her for her rulings on a recent temporary protective order TPO case, wherein you were the applicant and that you did thereby intimidate her to, um, in, thereby intimidating her to modify her previous court order and or issue an order of contempt against the adverse party and or in, intimating harm will occur if certain laws are not passed. And then as to the other count of intimidating public officer, that is count eight. We have that you did honor between January, I'm sorry, June 14, 2023 and June 18, 2023, willfully, unlawfully, directly or indirectly address any threat or intimidation to a public officer identified as B. Yeager, district court judge, with intent to induce her, contrary to her duty to do so, make, omit, or delay any act, decision, or determination by intimating harm will occur if certain laws are not passed and or a certain person is jailed. Uh, as to counts then four and eight in intimidating public officer gross misdemeanor, are these the um, facts that you are pleading guilty but mentally ill to today? Yes, sir. All right, and the final count to address is the count five 
Uh, that is a count of attempt to intimidate a public officer. And this is identified as that you did honor about June 18, 2023, willfully, unlawfully, directly or indirectly, attempt to address any threat or intimidation to a public officer, namely Tom Roberts, a former Nevada State Assemblyman and Assistant Sheriff of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, with intent to induce him, contrary to his duty to do so, make, omit, or delay any act, decision, or determination by intimating harm will occur if certain laws uh, are not passed, and that is the count five attempt to intimidate a public officer gross misdemeanor. Are these the facts that you're pleading guilty to today? Are these, did I cover everything? I think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's a lot here and we do understand that. At this time, Mr. Dalian, before I make my final findings, are there any questions that you have for me or for your counsel? Um, I don't think so. All right. Um, I am going to go ahead at this time, Mr. Dalian, and find that your plea entries today to these charges and counts multiple counts of certain charges, um, pleading guilty but mentally ill, is being done freely and voluntarily, that you do are doing so with understanding of the consequences of doing so, and that the court will accept those pleas and will at this time set you over for a sentencing date. Uh, uh, as you do remain in custody at this time, uh, the court will give the appropriate sentencing date for that. We do prioritize in custody sentencings over out of custody. Um, I do believe, um, obviously, the pre-sentence investigation report is going to need to be prepared and you'll be contacted in custody for that. Do we need any other evaluations at this time or will he be applying to... So defense counsel will be working on placement for him and to the appropriate inpatient and outpatient uh, treatment. I, I would just recommend that um, there is documentation that we went over today, um, earlier today, regarding the summer conference about prior diagnoses regarding his mental health. I would just recommend that those be filed under seal so the judge could have those at the time of sentencing to make their finding. And whether they're done under seal or whether they're submitted in camera, um, it, what the tricky part is sometimes if those records are not readily available, they can delay the process. So the sooner those records can be obtained if they're not already uh, in counsel's possession, uh, the better and that they are available um, so that uh, any necessary review uh, but if there's no separate evaluation that's going to be prepared, it would be beneficial, I think, of the judge, because the judge is going to need to make the necessary findings at the time of the sentencing regarding mental illness. Yes. Anything else? No. All right. Else. Here is the sentencing date. April 24th, 10 a.m. April 24th, 10 a.m. And then all remaining um, dates, we have a calendar call and a jury trial date coming up in May. Those would be vacated. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to give the paperwork back to the clerk. Thank you, Mr. Dowling. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Your Honor.